Am I right to say the majority of companies pick a name that wouldn't fall? Do you consider Nike to be a solid name or not so much? You know what a Reebok is? It's a small animal in Africa that's like a little deer. Well, what's an example of a pretty well-known company? I always ask people to guess, how fast do you think a video or, or a good image uh, is processed? And people say, oh, 10 times faster, 60,000. A good research on it. Mr. Beast is a guy that I've known. He's one of the top YouTubers, most followed people in the world. And he told me, you know, his thumbnail is everything. When you name your brand after yourself, it doesn't right. mean anything to anyone. If you're doing a personal brand, the best name is yours because it's impossible to compete with. All right. Welcome, Alexandra. Is that what I should call you? What, what do you go by? Since we're into names, this is a show about names. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, thank you for asking. I go by Alexandra. Okay. And yeah, I know people try to shorten my name to Alex, but I prefer the long version. Welcome to today's show. This is Ty Lopez. I have Alexandra Watkins on, special guest, author of Eat My Words. And the title today is You Probably Named Your Company Wrong. And here's why. So I have one of the most well-known brand and naming experts. And uh, am I right to say m the majority of companies pick a name that wouldn't fall <laughs> into the optimal category? I've, I've read your book. I've seen your website where you have the online quiz. We'll put, for those of you listening, we'll have the, the show notes on tylopez.com slash eat my words. tylopez.com slash eat my words. Uh, we'll, take your right to the show notes if you're listening later and we'll put that quiz but am i right that the majority what percentage of businesses will you think just knock it out of the park on naming five five percent like a good one is like google seems good now maybe it wasn't good when we first thought about it but 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 now they've at least branded what's an example of like if you had to say the one most scientifically validated brand name in the world what is it well, scientific, I don't know about scientifically validated, but I'll tell you this. I've said this name enough times on calls mm -hmm. like this where I can see somebody's face or I've just told it to them. And that's, that's validation enough. It's a okay. bike pump, you know, an air pump. And it's, it's named Joe Blow. <laughs> I like it. Joe Blow. That's good. There's a famous case study that a guy, Perry Marshall, one of the first guys teaching digital, uh, making a digital online income. And he used to refer to this company that sold industrial fans and they weren't doing well and they rebranded as badass fans. And they hired all the, or big ass fans and, and they got all these big pro football players like William Refrigerator Perry, all these linebackers and they would be, or linemen and they would be at conferences and trade shows. They had this big dude, you know, with a big fan. Would you consider that a good name? Big ass fans. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. People love that name. Here's why it's a good name. Cause people talk about it. Right. I probably first heard that name 20 years ago, maybe not that long, but yeah. it's, you just don't forget names like that. And you want your name to be unforgettable. And that's when I, when I said 5%, that's one of those names that's in the 5%. It's really distinctive. It's not for everyone, but that's okay. The people, that it is for or just gravitate towards it so what's an example of a really well-known brand that has a not so optimal name but has overcome it because obviously it is possible to overcome a horrible name it's just a pain in the butt and if you could name it right you might as well but what's an example of a pretty well-known company ebay ebay okay <laughs> ebay why is that is this too generic because eBay, it, the name, it, it's not even generic. It's like it doesn't mean anything to anyone. I'm sure there's some meaning behind it, but the, it doesn't matter what they were called. They they didn't even, it, it's such a cool platform and such a, you know, it's so disruptive, right? To use a really overused word that it doesn't matter what they called themselves. Etsy is another yeah. one. It's a weird name. Yeah. It's until you really know it and can remember it, it's hard to remember. Was Nike, do you consider Nike to be a solid name or not so much? 
I even when I was writing my book, I was reading about Nike because it's the one name people always list it. I always ask people when they're filling out their creative brief with me to list their top, you know, 10 names that they love. And Nike's always on there, but people pronounce it wrong. And I looked online and there's a guy that works in a running store and he was saying, you wouldn't believe how many times people come in and ask for Nikes in a running store. Yeah, Nikes. That's because like European or Spanish, Latin America, they say Nikes. Same with like, I'll tell you a, a name that's a weird one that probably falls into your suboptimal category, Adidas or Adidas. Like some countries people are like Adidas. So is that one of your, we'll get into this slowly but surely, but the fundamentals is don't pick a name that people can't agree on the pronunciation. Would that be a good rule of thumb? Yes, excellent rule of thumb, hard to pronounce, is bad, and you only want your name to be pronounced one way. Right. So let me give you an example. There's a name, it's a, like a green protein, you know, the powder that you add to your smoothies, and the spelling is V-E-G-A. So do you pronounce that Vega, like vegan, right. Vegja, like vegetarian, right. or Vega, like the 70s star? I've seen that one. I always call it Vega. Is it something, is it not supposed to be? It is Vega, it is Vega, but. Oh, I got it, yes. But how, I don't know, how How did you know that? Because I thought Vega, like vegan, or Vegja, like yes. vegetarian. So I, and the only way I know it's pronounced Vega is I called the company <laughs> after hours company. to listen to it on their voicemail. Okay. I've got my engineer in here, Rick. What is your favorite brand in the world? And we're gonna talk about the name. Just any, a brand that you buy stuff. It could be anything. Something that just, three names that pop in mind. Well, being a, a sound engineer, you're Shure, S-H-U-R-E. Okay, Shure, S-H-U-R-E. He's a sound engineer. So that's not a good name, because I would pronounce that Shuri or Shore. What's another, what's just a common brand? Anything, doesn't have to be. Seinhauser, that's a person's name. And now this is, doesn't have to be sound, just any product of anything that comes to mind. A Ford. Ford. What do you think of Ford? It's named after Henry Ford. Here's the thing. When you name your brand after yourself, it doesn't right. mean anything to anyone. It's meaningless. It's only right. meaningful to people that already know you. But that's not going to help. That's not going to be a, a magnet to bring in new customers. So let, let me ask you, let me give you a counter argument. I think you're right, but there, I think there's a special case because I tested this. When I first started doing personal development, business training, social media, I was like, ooh, millionaire life coach. This is going to be, I paid thousands of dollars. I bought this premium domain name. This was like 2011 or something. I was like, this is going to crush it. And it was a personal brand, right? It was like a podcast and advice. And I bought millionairelifecoach.com. And it just, it did okay, but I switched it to my name, which was tylobas.com, and I instantly saw a lift. And my theory, you correct me if I'm wrong, was like, well, if somebody, if you're doing a personal brand, the best name is yours because it's impossible to compete with, right? So it's like, if people resonate with my advice online, my social media, Ty Lopez is the best thing to name it. Because I've seen people name their social media not their name and i never i saw this woman fitness influencer literally yesterday her instagram her personal instagram was something like show off workout clothes or something and i was thinking what it should just be her name so are there special cases do you agree with that where there's special times like tony robbins brand it's okay for you to come see a tony robbins conference as opposed i mean he has like unleash the power within and all that but still the average person knows like tony robbins yeah, that's the name when you were talking. That's the one that popped into my mind. Yeah, yeah. if you can build a brand around yourself, but most people can't. Right. Um, you have a nice short name, and your name is really distinctive, too. It doesn't sound like anybody else's name. Right. I think that for most people, though, when you're starting out with a blank slate, your name doesn't your name doesn't say anything about you. It's not like you turn on the switch and you are overnight success. I mean, you put a lot of work into developing your own personal brand, as Tony Robbins did too. Tony Robbins also had the benefit of doing a lot of infomercials. So for most people, though, let me give you an example. There's a woman 
she's a PR professional. Her name is Lynette Hoy. Lynette Hoy says nothing about her fiery personality, nothing Mm. about herself. Uh, We rebranded her Fire Talker PR with the tagline. Okay, I like that. Thank you. And the tagline is hot on the press. She calls herself the fire chief. (laughs) She works in the firehouse. Her theme song. And, you know, if you have a brand name, you can have a theme song. So her theme song is Fire by the Ohio Players. And when she does a speaking engagement, she cranks that up and like it gets the crowd excited. And we've all been to speaking engagements where, and I know you do a lot of speaking and you see these cheesy speakers where they're trying to, you know, everybody get on your feet and like clap your hands. And it's so cheesy and cringy, right? But if she's cranking up fire by the Ohio players, she doesn't even have to ask people to like, you know, rock out. Like they're just doing it. It's putting people in the mood. So she has packages like controlled burn and fire starter. So that's what you can do when you have a name that lends itself to a theme. So like Snapchat, is that a decent name in the sense it's like you kind of, it became a verb like snap me, you know, and it is somewhat descriptive. What's the good and bad about a brand like a Snapchat name? Um, I mean, Snapchat's fine. It's a, you know, it's a compound name. It's, uh, yeah, it, it, it it's totally fine. It works for them. Um, where like Instagram... I don't know, in the beginning, it kind of, but names grow on us, right? Like Instagram, it's just like Insta, like Instacart, right? It's just so, it's so descriptive and it's not super creative where, uh, like I was naming a food delivery service one time and I named it Fork Stork. Oh, that's nice. Fork Stork. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. There was one, I don't know if you remember in San Francisco, there was one called Spoon Rocket. I love that name. It was such an awesome name because at lunchtime, that's what I always ordered when I lived in the city. And it was just, it was just fun. Like people want to have that emotional connection with a name and it's fun to say Spoon Rocket. Yeah. I wonder, so like when I'm thinking through names and I'm thinking of like in your book, Eat My Words or your website. Oh, wait, my book, this is my book though. My book is called Hello, My Name is Awesome. So when I was reading your book, Hello, My Name is Awesome and I was on your website for your agency, Eat My Words, I noticed, for example, you kind of give this quality score of multiple factors, right? And so if somebody listens to this podcast and they realize it doesn't have a great quality score according to your foundational principles of naming your brand and your business, how often do you look at it and go, let's rebrand this whole thing? Is that common? let's say if somebody has a new business it seems like it'd be easy to rebrand obviously if you're like already ebay you're probably not going to change the name and you probably wouldn't advise that i assume what's kind of the inflection point where you go no you're early enough in not enough people know you let's rebrand it's never too late to change your name we recently rebranded a bank that was more than 100 years old and the bank was named first national bank of syracuse but they weren't in Syracuse, New York. They were in Syracuse, Kansas. And for anyone listening that's an international, uh, Syracuse, New York, well known. Syracuse, Kansas, not so much. Yeah, I didn't even know there was a Syracuse, Kansas. Who? Yeah, who knew, right? And it's this tiny little town that's like um, an hour from the closest airport. And that airport is so small. And I know you've been to a million airports. It's so small. Like, can you top this though? It's so small that their food court was a vending machine that hadn't been used. You know, it was out of everything. I don't think. There was nothing. It was like in the office, they had like apples in there that Dwight Schrute had hammered in. So what did you end up naming it? They're a Maverick bank. They're actually an award-winning regional bank with multiple branches. And they, but their name wasn't distinctive. It didn't stand out. And they're in agriculture country and they help fund a lot of, they help finance and fund a lot of people's, yes, you know, farms. And their tagline was making dreams come true. So we rebranded them dream first. And you know, for a bank dream first, it's super aspirational, right? <laughs> That's maybe a sign it wasn't the best. 
you know what? They have a tagline and I, I'm so, I feel really bad not even remembering what their tagline is, but they sent me, they sent me a backpack full of swag with dream first on everything on, you know, cups, mugs, you know, backpacks, uh, t-shirts, uh, cozies, you know, all kinds of, um, koozies, cozies, those beer, <laughs> the names on everything, but yeah, dream first. It, it almost doesn't need a tagline. What percentage of a brand's success do you think is attributable to a good or a bad name? So let's say I have a great idea. I launch an app or a product and the idea is like a nine out of a 10. Okay. It's just like anybody who uses the product is going to be blown away and, and become a repeat customer. And, and, but in that hypothetical, I create a name that's like a one. It's like slug app or some, I don't know, vomit app, something that like turns people off. Do you think? It really, do you think that company can survive that horrible name? Or have you seen instances where really good businesses, the ultimate, one of the ultimate reasons it failed was the name? It's really hard. Yeah, I'll give you an example. And it's hard to know without. Yeah, you're never going to know exactly. Your hunch is my question. Yeah. We don't know why, you know, we don't never know though. It's like when people get divorced, you don't know the real story, right? So yeah, when the company when the company implodes. So yeah, uh, let me tell you, there's, we used to give out this award called the, the Razzie, <laughs> the head scratcher. Okay. Head scratcher of the year award to name, to names that suck. And yeah, one, it was an organic baby clothing company in San Francisco, of course. And the name was species species, but it was spelled S P E E S E E S. Oh my God. It's like a horrible, okay, first of all, species, horrible name. It's like a horror movie. <laughs> like, why would you name a baby? I feel like, a, wasn't there a horror movie, Rick, called Species? Can you Google it real quick? I swear there's a low budget horror movie. So if you have a baby toddler clothing line named Species, oh, yeah, yeah. it's the least nurturing baby, like, tender name in the history of mankind. Species, my baby. <laughs> Yeah, right. I know. It's like, here's your little alien. Here's your alien baby, alien baby clothing. So yeah, species. So it right. was so on their website, they explain you should never have to explain your name. But they said that it was spelled that way. Because that's how babies would spell species if babies could spell. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, except babies would never be talking about species. It's kind of an advantage. That is somebody was doing mushrooms and some they were they were on a bad LSD trip. There is a there is a horror thing called species. 1995. So let's say, okay, Rick, we have a baby brand. We're gonna sell people buy for their most beloved interact relationship in their life, their own children. Let's name it after a horror movie. Why don't you Ask them if they want to rebrand to uh, Friday the 13th clothing line for babies. Or, or what's that new Korean crazy horror movie that did super well? It was a weird. Okay. Anyway, movies. It, names matter. I feel like good movie. I feel like Star Wars was a good movie name. I don't know. I mean, it, it's like, you know, it's kind of like, well, maybe it's not a good name. What do you think? You're the expert. No, Star, Star Wars is a great name. It's a great name and it's nice and short, but talking about names of movies or TV shows. So for the longest time, I would not watch The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel because it was just such a weird name and like Maisel. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. God. And like Mrs. Maisel, like I just like, I don't want to watch some old lady named Mrs. Maisel, but then like the show is like was fun and refreshing and like cool and and midge midge her name's midge mazel like the midge should have been in the title midge is way more fun than mazel rick my my engineer is saying you liked it it's a great show he says it's amazing so there's an example where they lost i wouldn't have watched anything the more yeah that is true when i go on netflix it's funny you know they say don't judge a book by its cover but you do Words are, uh, uh, images are processed 60,000 times faster than words. So a really good. Ooh, really? Wait, I have to write that down. Uh, 
cover. Yeah, 60,000. It's mind-boggling stat. Yeah, it's not. I always ask people to guess, how fast do you think a video or, or a good image uh, is processed? And people say, oh, 10 times faster. 60,000. A good research on it. You know, Mr. Beast is a guy that I've known. He's one of the top YouTubers, most followed people in the world. And he told me, you know, the thumbnail is everything like huge and also the title of it you know is it really catchy and I, I teach this formula i have an advanced scaling program helping businesses scale you know from one past 50 million dollars in revenue um and one of the things i teach this formula called the hum formula h-u-m and so you need these three components in any marketing for it to potentially go viral mm. and h stands for hypnotic uh, opening. So it needs to be really fascinating initial kind of phrase. And that'd be like the, the name of a movie or like you said, the, a book or a company. And then you have, you know, you, the U stands for a unique philosophy. Your product needs to have something that stands out. And then the M stands for magical, um, magically make it easy. So the product, good products magically make things easy. That's why supplements sell well. It's like, the hypnotic is the hypnotic opening for a good ad is like, did you know that scientists estimate that men's testosterone has dropped by 63% in the last hundred years? And so that's your hypnotic opening. A lot of men will be like, ah, my testosterone is dropping. And then the, un the unique philosophy, let's say for that business could be um, something like, and we think the reason is EMFs from your phone or something are disrupting your, your, your hormonal balance and then the make it easy magic is we have a little tag you put on the back of your phone and it blocks 80 percent of the emf so that a good businesses have this kind of hum formula uh by the way for those of you listening on tylopez.com slash eat my words for the show notes i'll put a link to this scaling system and some of this hum thing but so the name to me falls into that pillar of a good business that can scale it needs to be kind of a hypnotically fascinating opening um line and so when you rebranded you know this bank or you rebranded uh you were talking about this pr woman uh from just her own name and you kind of have this hypnotic what was it fire talker or something yeah that's kind of that hypnotic like i have to pay attention it's kind of disruptive and really bad names Maisel, yeah would we just say the marvelous mrs Maisie or something yeah, there's actually names out of the op opposite of hypnosis. Hypnosis makes you stop. You know, the opposite of that is like, I want to scroll faster. I see that a lot. Why do you think Hollywood spends $100 million on making a movie and doesn't name it well? Like, what's going on? I don't know about, I don't know about movies, but I'll tell you, I know, I know this about brands that people are so desperate to find an available domain name that uh, they'll, yes. they'll sacrifice Val. I always say I'd like to buy a Val, please. Or so yes. they, or the they think they're being creative by eliminating some letters or spelling things with a number in the middle. I see that all the time. Uh, the, the here's a bad name. X O B N I. So X O here's a bad name, Rick. X O B N I. What is it? N I. X O B Zobni. Is that what it's pronounced? Yeah, it was originally pronounced Zobni, but Bill Gates pronounced it Zobni, so they changed the pronunciation of it. What the hell were they selling? What is Zobni? Zobni is inbox spelled backwards. Like, how would you know? Oh, inbox. Well, yes. See, that's being, that's where people, they thought they were being clever. Right. But just because it's, or creative, just because it's creative doesn't mean it's a good idea for business, right? I think one of, yeah, I agree. And one of the things I liked in your book that I think is a super good warning to you out there is don't base the name on the fact that you can buy the dot com domain because you can always add a word lots of things i think even zoom started out with zoom.us they couldn't buy the dot com mm -hmm. or there's yeah. good things that you add the word like get like if you have an app and you want to name it i don't know crumbles or something like that for a cupcake app or something if crumbles.com is taken you could just name it get crumbles.com or download crumbles or something like that is that kind of am i summarizing what i read 
That's excellent advice. The Facebook started out as the Facebook. They weren't Facebook.com until 2005. Tesla, for the first 13 years they were in business, was uh, their mm -hmm. domain was teslamotors.com. And that's the example I like to talk about because, look, it didn't stop. You know, it wasn't a roadblock to Elon mm -hmm. Musk. He just kept going. And you can always, if you know, you're obsessed with getting the exact match domain mm -hmm. name, you can get that later, you know, after you've made your millions. But don't let the lack of an available domain name stop you from having a great name. You know, Basecamp was Basecamp HQ. Mm -hmm. Dropbox was Get Dropbox. So, you know, they just, you know, and they, both of those um, companies had millions of users before they had their name, um, Square, Square Up. So a uh, slide share, slideshare.net, keep going. Don't add a modifier word, or you can be really creative. One of my favorites is uh, there's a smoked turkey company. I saw this, I was at the dentist in the waiting room and I was flipping through O Magazine, Oprah's Magazine, the Christmas issue where she has her famous O list. And I saw this smoked turkey company. I wasn't gonna send anyone a turkey, because that's like just such a weird thing to send, but I guess people do. And the domain name, so it's called Greenberg mm -hmm. Smoke Turkey. It's not a great company name. Greenberg yeah. could be misspelled, but their domain name was unforgettable and it's gobblegobble.com. Gobble Gobble, that, that good name for a smoked turkey company, Rick. Would you remember Gobble Gobble? How, I feel like memorable is like one of the core things because you can't get virality if people can't remember, you need that word of mouth. So you need a name. I mean, uh, like I'm in Sweden right now and I'm going to a restaurant that I've gone. It's called East. Now it might not be the best name. And it's kind of like this vibe of like Eastern, you know, Middle Eastern food. But at least I remember the damn name. You know, yeah. there's some names to restaurants. It's like there's <laughs> I was just in Denmark where you have some of the, you know, the, the most Michelin star restaurants in the world and some of the names I'm going, my God. God, they're amazing restaurants, but it's going to be tough for somebody because they make a lot of money on tourists. When you go to these Michelin star in Copenhagen, there's a lot of, I hear a lot of American accents and stuff. Nobody's going to be able to go tell their friend about it because you're like, I don't even know what to say, you know? So is that, am I right on that? That like yeah. get a name that people can say that probably yeah. goes to your pronunciation thing. Yeah. Just making it memorable. So for something, there was a restaurant in San Francisco a really nice restaurant called SPQR. SPQR, yeah. But no one could ever remember it. Like that, you, for something to be memorable, and it stands, SPQR, it has the curse of knowledge mm -hmm. where it's meant, it was meaningful to the restaurant owners, but not to anybody else. And SPQR yes. is Latin and it stands for <laughs> the Senate and the Roman people. But like, but that doesn't even, correlate with spqr it's like wait where does the q come from not the senate and the roman people like you have to have a phd in history to remember what spqr exactly 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 so that's a hard one for people there's in and you know when you're talking when you just said you're not going to tell your friends about it there's a a chocolatier mm -hmm. in in the bay area called it's spelled T H C O. Like, how do you T? How do you pronounce T H C O, Rick? Thaco, Thaco. Yeah, that's that is a Thaco. Thaco. Yeah, it's Cho. It's Cho. Like the T is silent. Yeah, Cho. It's Cho. Is that like a Cambodian pronunciation or something? So if you were, if you said, "Hey, after I know you're in, are you in Sweden right now?" Yeah, I'm in Sweden right now. Yeah, you're in Stockholm. Okay, so if you said, oh, hey, next, I'm going to San Francisco. And if I and, and I knew you like chocolate, and I said, oh, you got to go to Cho, go to the factory. Yes. You would not know it was spelled T-C-H-O, yeah. right? And, and I was walking by there one time and with a friend, and he's like, oh, my girlfriend loves that T-C-H-O chocolate. Because it's all, it's written in capital letters. Mm -hmm. And that's what I call capital punishment. Because <laughs> it's a, when there's all capital letters. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it's pronounced like AT&T, right? It looks like it's, that's how you pronounce it. T-C-H-O. And so, yeah, that's a name that, and I know the founder regrets it. And 
you know, they've overcome that name, but it, think of all the oh, business yeah. they've lost, the people that, right? And you want your name, like, you know, go back to, we want our name to be known by one name, not to Cho, not Cho, and not TCHO. Those are all the same brand, but you wouldn't yes. know that. So, you know, you're, you're, you're diluting the value of your brand when it's pronounced different ways. It's, you're, it's like you're fragmenting it. Yeah, I know. Like when the, uh, you know, in your book, you talk about the curse of knowledge where like the owner knows what it means, like species baby clothing, but nobody else knows what it is. What about, so I, I built a brand called 67 Steps. It, it became, it's become almost the most sold online personal development course in history. One of the most, right? It, and it went viral back in 2015, 16, 17. What do you think of that name? 67 steps. It's very like I get people off the street like 67 steps. It was re easy for them to remember. Um, I explained it in the advertisement. Basically, what you're getting is 67 lessons that millionaire mentors taught me. Do you would you consider that a decent name? Would you? It, what? Yeah, no, that's a good it's a good name. It's intriguing. 67 is not a number you hear very often. You know, seven steps would be common, but 67 steps. Yeah, it arouses curiosity, and that's always a good thing. It was built around a story that I explained, which was scientists found it takes about the average person takes 67 days to change their habits. So it was like, give me 67 days. Each day you get a video released, what my mentors taught me. Let's reprogram your brain for success. And I need 67 days. They're used to think that you could change habits in about 28 days, but the newest science, and I, I just came up with that name reading this new science, which came out in like 2013, university, uh, university in London came up with this. So it kind of had a story. I did have to explain it. So that's why I was wondering, is it horrible if you have to explain it a little bit? It wasn't a confusing, it wasn't like a story like, well, my great uncle one time was, you know, bet on the number 67. It was kind of like a congruent scientific uh, story. Well, you had the real estate to explain the name, right? Because you were doing YouTube ads, right? Online stuff. So it's not like someone was walking by your product in a grocery store and they saw the name on the label and they had a split second to make a decision. Ah, uh, right. You had time to explain the name and, you know, what the 67 steps were and all that. You had a lot of it's like on a package label, there's very little real estate on it. Like a, you know, a cereal box has a lot, right? But like mm -hmm. if, if it's a package of yogurt, you know, Faye, F-A-G-E, also like constantly mispronounced. F-A-G, that's a yogurt? F-A-G-E? F-A-G-E, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that has to be, faggy is not a good, you remember on, on The Office, Michael Scott gets in trouble for, when he finds out that Oscar the is gay and, and he's like, I call everybody faggy. <laughs> you don't remember that one? Anyway, so if you've seen The Office, you'll know. But F-A-G-E for a yogurt literally to me either is phage or faggy. Yeah. Faggy. Yeah, so that's that would be a thumbs yeah. down. Am I, am I? Yeah. Let's do a quick rapid fire here, if you don't mind. Then I want to go deeper into the book and – um. So let me just rapid fire some names that I thought of, and you just give me the quick rapid fire. You get, give me the approver veto. We're gonna call you the president of uh, the president of the United Names. <laughs> okay, so you're the president, so you could approve or veto. Um, Reebok. If you know what a Reebok is, it's a small animal in Africa that's like a little deer. Okay, so we got to approve for Reebok. Um, Google. Not in the beginning, but it grew on people. And that's another one. It doesn't matter what they call themselves. Right. They were yeah. so good. But yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and I'm a sp specifically saying on day one, if I came to you with these names and they weren't well known, would you rebrand it? So Google is a thumbs down on day one, I'm assuming. Yeah. I, w I would not have c said the name Google. No. It, it made people cringe when they first heard it. No, you don't. You don't have to justify. I believe in the human intuition. You're an expert. You, you. I believe in the thirty thousand hour rule. You have like thirty thousand hours studying names, so your gut feeling is is probably pretty accurate. Okay, gut feeling of yes, works. 
rebranding Los Angeles as LA. La La Land. Yeah. Okay. So that's a thumb up. Yeah. La La Land. How about a city? I was just in Sao Paulo, Brazil. If that was a brand, I've never seen a city so big as Sao Paulo. It's a mind blowing. But obviously, it doesn't matter. It's not a brand. But is that a name? Somebody would have to be careful because nobody pronounces it right. Yeah, no one pronounces it right. Like Rio is a great name. And I've been there, yes. right? It's nice and short. I mean, it's obviously Rio de Janeiro, but people shorten it to Rio. Okay, so Rio. And it's funny, the brand Rio is almost sometimes voted the number one recognizable global city. If you say Rio, everybody's like, ah, Rio. They even made the movie. Isn't there a movie, Rick? Rio? Is it in Brazil or something? It's a cartoon, isn't it? Okay, let's keep going because I think people are going to really like this. And by the way, on tylopez.com slash eat my words, if you want to uh, work with Alexandra, she's got various packages. And so I'm going to have there on the show notes an application and all that stuff. So you can hire her. You can do the book and website and all that. Yeah, there's Rio. Okay, continue. Since everybody likes Elon Musk, SpaceX, his, his space business. That's, SpaceX is a cool name. It's a cool name. Okay, so that's a thumb up, SpaceX. Okay, I think this is a cool name. He built this company where he digs holes under LA. To, you drive in tunnels. Do you like The Boring Company? Yes, I love The Boring Company. I think that's really fun. He, Elon Musk is good at names. He's good at names. What do you think of Twitter, though? I like the name Twitter. They're one of my yeah. clients. Yeah, I worked on naming uh, their, their disappearing tweets. Uh, yes. Fleets. Fleets. Okay. Oh, you came up with that. I, I thought that was good. Okay. I'm going through. Rick, feed me some just names. We're doing the thumb up. We're going to do 10 more real fast. Okay. I've got this water bottle here. It's a Norwegian company, Imsdal. I already know. I've learned enough from you. This is a thumb down. But what about Voss? V-O-S-S -S water. No. Okay. I, I mean, no. I, I mean, th look, their bottles are gorgeous. So you like the physical branding. They have that glass bottles. Yeah, yeah, their bottles are beautiful. I mean, I guess Voss, it's kind of a sexy sounding name. Yes. So yeah, it works. It works for them. Fiji water. The water in Fiji is beautiful. If you've been, you know that. But I think the, yeah, people find it, the mystique of it, like, you know. Yeah, like Icelandic water. and. It... Yeah, Icelandic. I love Icelandic. Okay, I've got one. You like Icelandic. Yeah, because it's like... Icelandic, I like better than... Because Fiji Fiji is very tropical and it's not refreshing. Fiji is not a refreshing place to visit. But Icelandic, yeah. that sounds cool and refreshing. Yes, I love that name. Yeah, cold mountain water. Okay, I got one for you. Name me an expert. Alexandra Watkins. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down on OnlyFans. If on day one, if you were hired, would you have used OnlyFans? No. No, I hate that name. You, you hate the name OnlyFans. We'll break it down. Well, it's just like, it's like, like okay, well, and I was thinking about it the other day. Like, why? And it's really, like, it's just so, to, it, those two right. words don't belong together. Only fans. Like, like no one ever <laughs> says that in a sentence. It's so, that's a name that I would call forced, right? Yes. So they, you, in your opinion, they succeeded in spite of having a name dragging them down, which happens. Yes. Yes, they did. Okay. A few more because I like this rapid fire. So Amazon. Love the name Amazon. You love the name Amazon. It's like every, Yes. Yes, Jeff Bezos is a great namer because Amazon is a really wide umbrella and it doesn't matter yes. what they introduce. I mean, look at all the different products and services they have. Yes. Amazon still works. And when Jeff Bezos named the company, first of all, original name that he came up with was. Yeah, Cadabra is not good. <laughs> Cadabra, like Abracadabra. <laughs> like a dead body, you mean? Cadaver, yeah. No, but it was too close to the Spanish word for Cadabra. Jabber, but Amazon I love because it's he wanted something and I've been on the Amazon, so maybe that's why I have more of a affinity towards it. But yeah, it's big and wide and vast, and anything falls can work with Amazon. So what about okay? Let, let, let let's so Amazon's a good solid name. You mentioned in your book, 
okay hello my name is awesome you mentioned you don't like like the ly and bit bitly or what do you think of shopify because it's one of the most you know phenomenally fast growing startups in history shopify I think Shopify and Spotify, I don't know which was first, but one copied the other. But whoever, I like, I think I like Spotify. Spotify and Shopify are super close. Uh, Spotify is right down the street. That's Swedish. Shopify is Canadian. Yeah. Oh, is Spotify is? Oh, oh, interesting. Yeah, I think one or two of the ifis are okay, but then everybody started copying them, right? It's like Twitter, then there was like, Yammer. Yammer. <laughs> That's a weird one. Yammer. Yeah. And there's one other, there's one other one that's like, you can always tell who the copycats are, right? So there was QuickBooks, right? We all know QuickBooks. And then FreshBooks. Like, it's a copycat. Nobody likes a copycat. Why be somebody else when you can be yourself? What about Whole Foods, though? Whole Foods is good. Whole Foods is good. That seems like a solid name. It's like non-processed, healthier. It kind of conveys, it doesn't have the curse of knowledge, like you said, like if I don't know what it is and you're like, let's go shop at this place. It's got better food called Whole Foods. It's like reinforced. I don't have to have known the founder's story because I feel like that's where, yeah. Right. Oh. But look in Seattle, there's a store called, right. it's a high-end premium grocery store and it's called Thriftway. Yes. And at one time it probably was the place to get, mm -hmm. you know, discounted groceries, but they've like really outgrown their name. Like they're, they're a lot, that's what I would call restrictive. So they, they should have changed their name a long time ago. That's one of your principles in your book and on your website, which is don't have a restrictive name so that when you expand all of a sudden your name, because Thriftway to me is the opposite of a high end place. There used to be thrifties, you know, it's like, that's like a low butt and you don't want to be buying your steak. Remember yesterday you had a steak, Rick, Rick had a steak at a restaurant here in Sweden and it said minute steak. And in America, minute steak is like the worst cut of beef here. It's not. And, and so let me bring up, I think if you're going to go global, don't restrict yourself. There was a dating site. I remember it was an Australian company. It was for seniors, older people dating, and they called it ripe dating. Okay. In America, when someone, you say they're ripe, it means they smell bad. Like in North Carolina, you're like, oh, so to an American, it's a restrictive name because nobody thinks of ripe date. I mean, that's a horrible name. I think in any country, no offense to those people. It's horrible and it's one letter off from rape and I don't, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, that, I didn't think of that, but that's even worse. Yeah, you don't want, yeah, Tinder, what do you think of Tinder? Last one, thumbs up or thumb down on Tinder. Yeah, Tinder's kind of fun, it's like fiery. Tinder's fun. Bumble, Timble, okay, so which one do you like on day one, assume we didn't know these, which is the better dating site name in your opinion? Match.com, the original one. Tinder, Hinge, or Bumble? Which one do you like? Match.com. Yeah, Match.com is good. That's what built the empire. I don't think you know this, but my naming, I owe my naming career to a Match.com date. You know, that's now Tinder. I was on a Match.com date and that's how I, like, it wasn't, it was somebody that my date knew that got me into, yeah, I lied my way into naming, the naming business. Yeah, I was on a Match.com date with this guy and we were going to a party and I asked who was going to be there. And one of his friends worked at Landor as like the head of naming. And I have been trying to get my foot in the door forever. And so when I, he wouldn't introduce me to his friend at the party because he was kind of cringy and that like, I'm like, oh my God, I have to meet your friend. <laughs> so I had to eavesdrop on every conversation. Yeah, well... I finally met the guy. His name's Anthony Shore, and he's become a friend and colleague, but... He was jealous. What was the name of the company, the naming company you wanted to work at? Land? I feel like that's a bad name. Well, Walter Landor is a branding pioneer. Um, yeah, the company used to be on a... Oh, okay. It's a name guy. Well, a lot of firms are named after the founder, and it doesn't... A lot of law firms, right? We... we... Oh yeah, law firms love that.
Yeah, we name a lot of law firms because they realize that their own name doesn't, it's not serving the clients, you know? What is it saying to the clients? But dating sites, can I just tell you, so the cringy, the cringiest one to me is eHarm eHarmony, okay. eHarmony. I I could not ever go on there because I never wanted to say that, oh yeah, we met on eHarmony. That name just makes me cringe. So I worked for eHarmony naming, I don't know if you remember their website that was a match.com competitor and it was called Jazzed. Do you remember Jazzed? It had a Okay, I didn't know. I didn't hear that. I remember Match had a chemistry was one they had. Yeah, chemistry. Um, but eHarmony came out with Jazzed, which was I, Jazzed. Was that like a was for gay people like jazz hands? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, Rick. What do you think when you think of Jazzed for dating? <laughs> no, but. E-Harmony, do you remember E-Harmony got... I actually, Rick, Rick never laughs at my jokes. He laughed at that one. I wasn't even joking. He's still laughing. Okay. No, jazzed, like you're jazzed when you meet someone that you like. But no, E-Harmony had a gay dating website. They probably still do. Because remember they got... Yeah, what do you name a gay dating site? You got to be careful with that one. Oh, Grinder. I know the founder, Joel. He used to come to my talks. Joel, uh, he's a guy out of West West Hollywood. Yeah, Grinder. Now that, <laughs> let's talk about Grinder. You're a naming expert. Somebody comes to you. I have a gay hookup app. I want to name it Grinder. Now, they, would you give it a thumbs up? I like Grinder, but I. Yeah, but I'd like to buy a vowel, please, because it's missing the E. It's missing the E. But I've named a couple dating websites. One of my favorites was uh, Cherry Pick. Cherry Pick. Now, wait a sec. What, what was this? Well, it was a Facebook app. It was, Well, actually, they sold to Facebook. But it was an app where they use Facebook, and you're looking at your your single, your friends' friends on Facebook that are single. We're cherry picking. And then another one, this name never saw the light of day, but. Okay, Fox Hunt. I like that one. I love this name for a dating website, Fox Hunt. Oh, yeah. Let me. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you, but Rick just reminded me. So years ago, I was speaking at the dating conference uh, that was in Miami. And I was, we were driving together to speak, the founder of Grinders. His name's Joel. And uh, my good friend, Herman, who's from Argentina, and he just, he's a very smart guy, he's a PhD, but he doesn't always understand perfectly English, what people said. So Joel gets in, we were, I forget what it was. We were going from the airport and Joel, I introduced him. This guy has Grindr. Her mom's like, oh, great. And he's like, what kind of app? And he's like, well, this is an app. You just put in your location and you can see people like 10 feet away from you, you know, and you can like meet up with them. And so my friend, Herman, who's straight, not gay, is like, oh, I'm downloading. So I, he didn't tell us, but he downloaded it while we we're in the car. We're driving. We're driving. He's like, dude, I think the settings are wrong on your company. And Joel Simkai is his name, who founder of Grindr, is like, what do you mean? He's like, I'm only getting dudes. And they're like 20 feet. <laughs> I should, I really shouldn't have told Herman and let him just run with that. Just be like, oh no, it'll, it'll switch over to women for a day. Just meet up with whoever. But anyway, so yeah, grind, grinder is good in that it lets you know what's going to, maybe what about a dating, okay, what about a dating app called Torque? If it's like a hookup site. Yeah, it's a little masculine. I love the word Torque. I've definitely tried to name things that. So what about, let's switch sec, uh, subjects for a second. What about, like slogans, logo. I Because I feel like a good slogan can really enhance a name. Am I wrong on that? No, you're right. Well, a good slogan like Nike, just do it. That's like a battle cry. Yeah, the battle cries are good. A good, like a good tagline, like one one of my favorites is Cot for cotton and it's the fabric of our lives. Like that's a beautiful tagline. So yeah, anytime you can make an emotional connection, we we named this popcorn gourmet popcorn store Pop Psychology, and their tagline was "Crazy for popcorn." That's a good one. So Rick, there she renamed a popcorn comp store. It was called Popcorn Psychology or Pop Psychology. Pop Psychology, crazy for popcorn. It's pretty good. I'm a big psychology guy. What about, so a slogan, you know, let's say I have a lot of people follow me who 
want to go down the route of building a brand on social media. Do you think, like, let's say somebody's starting out, and I was talking to a guy today, and I actually came up to me on the street, he's talking, I was like, oh, are you Ty Lopez? I got LASIK so that I can be more anonymous when I want to and take my glasses off. But he came up, and, and we were talking to this interesting guy, and he has a coffee brand, and and he also surfs. He's from San Diego. I'm like, man, you should do like a podcast where you're like sitting on a surfboard, you know, and it's called, and it's all about, because surfers are basically, it's the, the best anti-aging workout. You'll see 80 year old ripped surfer dudes. It's crazy. It just works to the core. It does. It's not too intense. So I was like, why? And, and the dude's in good shape. I'm like, you have a six pack, do your brand, social media brand podcast, just float out on like Mission Bay, San Diego, where there's no waves. And do a podcast sitting next to like get a you know pretty woman surfer you two and you talk about health productivity and you tie in your coffee brand and I was telling him like brand yourself whatever you know coffee drinking surfer or something I forget what I told him do you like that for a social media brand where like your name on Instagram is you know I forget what the guy's name was but Bob Smith and then below it in quotes he puts like the surfing coffee podcast or something like that. Do you like that on a personal brand level of some type of slogan? Yeah. I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I, I went to Mission Bay High and I, <laughs> I, I live in San Diego. I live, I live right by the beach in uh, Point Loma OB, but. Uh, I went to elementary school in San Diego. So I, it's my old stomp. Yeah. Yeah. I went to, I went to Longfellow and then I went to, uh, I, I went to junior, like, Right before high school, I went middle school there. Oh, that's so funny. I did too, P PB Junior High. So I believe that having, so there's a, speaking of surfers, there's a surfer guy, big social media guy. His name is Tyson Marr. He's Australian and he travels the world on a shoestring. And his moniker is the naked traveler because he's, you know, Right. So, yes, I do believe monikers are great. And I've been talking to a lot of people lately about monikers. So, like, there's this guy named Bruce Birch, and he is the father of cause marketing, which is a really long kind of moniker. So, I rebranded him the cause father. I like that. The cause father. That's great. <laughs> the cause father. So, like, thank you. Yeah. And, and he, he is all over that. Um, I don't see his card around here, but yeah, he he has his, his card now. You know, he's kind of looks like, you know, his the godfather, you know, with his his tuxedo and, you know, his his Italian mafia suit. And uh, he's uh, that's his favorite movie. Like, I had no idea when I said you're the cause father. Sorry, I'm trying. I don't usually have his card right on my computer. But anyway having a moniker can really help. Like there's a attorney and her name is Lauren Vasquez and she's a cannabis attorney and she calls herself the fired up lawyer. Okay. The fired up lawyer. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You probably can't say anything crazier than that as a lawyer you might lose your law license. So for me, like people, I've had all these different things and memes and stuff and like knowledge and here in my garage and you know one of my i don't know if you call this a moniker but i think when you look at social media influencers you need this quick kind of slogan because people like to box you in if people think of a grant cardone they think of a real estate you know and they think of gary v they think of like he has a phrase like hustle and you think of tony robbins it's like change your emotional state kind of thing and so for me i think when i'm talking to people and advising them i'm saying even before you're well known, come up with your moniker so that you can keep your branding consistent. And mine is kind of, you know, knowledge, I think is mine. Like it, I talk about mentors, but it's all under the subheading of knowledge. But the one that I like, I took from an old Warren Buffett uh, book to first graders, which was the more you learn, the more you earn. I, I feel like I'm associated with talking about income, business. And I feel, I don't know, if, it's not so much the rhyming, but it is so I, I wanted to get your opinion moniker for me is it more like here in my garage which is this more like that one commercial knowledge would be one the more you learn the more you earn or sometimes now i've been doing it so long people kind of call me og like one of the ogs like ogs like an original gangster my dad was actually an og my dad went to prison in terminal island as an og in, in that kind of drug dealing world so and also you know og 
for me, since I'm famous for this car, garage with cars, like original garage, but which of those strikes you as a better moniker? OG, you know, here in my garage, knowledge, the more you learn, the more you earn. Like what, what, any of those maybe, or none of them? I think those are all things you're associated with. I like OG and I, I definitely know what OG, original gangster. I'm definitely familiar with that. But I think like here in my garage, that's, those are, I feel like a moniker should be a personal nickname. So like mine could be the brand name badass. So because your name is Ty and you were talking about the more you learn, the more you learn, earn is it rhymes. So it's lyrical. It's people remember things that are lyrical. Ty rhymes with so many different words. So you could be, you know, Ty the knowledge guy. I mean, that's really basic, but so you need a moniker would be like, what's your, what's your, position, you know, what's your positioning? Are you the blank? Like, like Bruce Birch, the cause father, um, you know, the fired up attorney. So there's a woman named Amber Hurdle. She calls herself the velvet machete. So it's like the, the velvet. She's a, that's Amber Hurdle. You really want to rebrand yourself right now. <laughs> I thought you said Amber Heard. Amber Hurdle, Rick, would you want that name right now? That's like there's a guy on Twitter whose name is uh, Jeffrey Epstein. and But in his branding, you know what his branding is? He, and he's well known. He's like a reporter or an author or something. So it's Jeffrey Epstein and his monitor is not that Jeffrey, which is actually a smart little moniker to keep him from getting death threats or something. Yeah, maybe it could be like, I'm also associated with books a lot. So it can it could be like Ty the book guy. Ty, I like knowledge. I You know. As a meme, if I could have any meme, sometimes memes, people don't like having a meme. I'm like, a lot of people know knowledge. And I feel like knowledge is my philosophy. My philosophy, because other influencers have other philosophies. Like, you know, like I said, Gary Vee more goes down the angle of like, you hustle to succeed. And, you know, and but mine in Grant Cardone's is like 10x, like really be super ambitious or you want to just 10x whatever you're doing. But mine is more not only money oriented it's like knowledge the more you know the higher quality of life you have it's what separates us as homo sapiens it's what makes our life uh so different it what gives us the chance to live a life where we're untied from our instincts and just gonna die and be forgotten knowledge is that thing that really differentiates humans from any other species so i, I don't know maybe knowledge tie the knowledge guy or what if it could it be? Does it have to rhyme or could it be like tie the knowledge OG or the OG of knowledge or something like that? Well, OG, not everybody knows what OG is, correct? Like Andrew, Andrew Tate did good. He did top dog or what? Or what is it? The, uh, top G, whatever. It was like the G kind of thing. That that name has like he really made that. Not everybody knows it, but they know it now. You know, it's like. Top G became like its own moniker. What do you think about? So I have a fitness app slash company and it's called 150 Body. Um, and it's based around 150 day challenge. But more importantly, it's based around there's a lot of science around the number 150. Like you should have 150 minutes of deep sleep and REM every night. Uh, your body proportions, a woman's hip should be 150% bigger than her waist and a man's chest should be ideally 150% bigger than your waist. Um, you should get 150 minutes of vitamin D sun per week. So do you like a short name like that? 150 body? I've had good results with numbers. My audience resonates kind of with numbers. I don't know if that's yeah, no, I like 150 body. I love hearing all that. I didn't know any of that. And that's really interesting. So, yeah, as long as the number's selected with, you know, there's a lot of meaning behind it. Yes. Yeah. Because I feel like 67 Steps had, like, science behind it. 150 Body has a ton. It's pretty mind-boggling. You know, there's this thing called the golden ratio, which is, like, 1.61 and a Fibonacci sequence. But actually, the number 150 in my research, it has more associated with it. Like I said, the, the, you know, in terms of the body symmetry, um, how many reps and workout reps do you need in a good workout at the gym at the minimum? If you're a busy entrepreneur, it's like 150 reps is a good thing. Another thing is right now, scientists think the peak 
longevity humans can attain right now is at age 150. And it's kind of an anti-aging protocol, right? So I just found so many good things. And I feel like, is that, do you consider that like you talk about in your book, The Curse of Knowledge? Is that you have to too, know too much? I felt like it could be memorable. Like in the app, you get the 150 ingredients you can eat for the diet. So there's a little app and you type in whatever you want to eat, like bread, for example, and it'll give it like a color code. Eat often, rarely, never. And so I, it has 150 ingredients with 150 meal plans in there. I was just going to consistently build it. Do you, so you, you don't think that's too much curse of knowledge? No, no, I love all the different things. No, that's like amazing. No, you, I can't believe how many things you have for 150. And 150 body is a little lyrical because 50 and body have that same kind of, you know, e body 50. Yeah. Yes, like doom to doom. So you look, you look at the cadence of things because I was going to call it like 150. 153 body would work. What was my other thing? Like 150 fitness. But 153 body. Interesting. Yeah, but yeah. But 150 body, it's no, it's nice. It's round. It's easy to say. Yeah, but like 158 body wouldn't have the same resonance. Yes, exactly. And, and I have this, I launched this, one of the most common requests I've gotten in the last 10 years, because people see my life, you know, I have a fun life and they see dating and beautiful women and all this. And so people have asked me a lot my theories on dating as an entrepreneur man, right? And for 10 years, I've avoided the subject because it's so controversial. And earlier this year, like I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to give you my hypothesis. And I didn't want it to be too many. And I came up with the third. Th so I named the program the 13th thesis, uh, the 13th thesis. Now, this M you might not like as much because it's a little bit, it could be mispronounced. I bought all the misspellings, which I recommend you do. But it's basically, I have 13 hypotheses on what you need, that you need to know as a man. And the most important is the 13th thesis. So do you think that, is that just, it's more of a niche product. This is not going to be a billion people, you know, that are interested. Is that too hard to pronounce? Is that 13th thesis? Thesis is an interesting word. You don't see it very often, but it definitely is loaded. That's why I like it. It's memorable. I was actually... Yeah, no, it's super memorable. Yeah, no, it's loaded with like thesis. It's such a loaded word. Like when you think of it, think of how visually evocative that is when you hear it. Like you're just thinking of it's you're very smart, right? To have to write a thesis. Yes, this is like this is knowledge. It's the core knowledge, right? No, it's it's And the the slogan is like the actual science of long-term mating. And I use a weird word mating because I wanted to differentiate from dating because this is a more kind of advanced course. And I wanted to be, I specifically didn't want to use dating because dating connotes so many things from hookups and things. And I wanted to give my thesis on long-term mating, which is essentially who to have a kid with. Cause I think that's your most important decision. You can date the wrong person, but don't, don't have a kid with the wrong person. You're stuck with them for life. So I have another one, uh, and it's, 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 by the way, I highly recommend it and that you all go and get this book. Hello, my name is awesome. By the way, I recommend it to a friend who's a top entrepreneur in Europe. And you instantly helped him, Alexandra, because, and he got his, he got butt hurt right away because he had a name that was like Lee. And I told him, oh, Alexandra, she's my naming mentor. And she said, no Lees. So he went back, but I caught him early and I said, this might save your life. You know, you build a brand who's just going to name it some, it was, it was back to what you recommend against. It was like, he found a domain with Lee. It had nothing to do with, it was like, you know, Tabley or something. And it was like a business productivity tool. And I'm like, come on, man. So he went back to the drawing board. So anybody listening, tylopez.com slash eat my words, the show notes, the links to the quiz, the book, and also, if you want to retain Alexandra, she does some private, uh, she has some higher package, you know, one-on-one -on -one type stuff in different packages. Um, this is a name that I came up with, and, and I, we'll wrap up here soon. I don't want to keep you too long, but such an interesting subject. Um, so I lived with the Amish for two and a half years. And another thing people have seen on social media is I live like 70% of my life 
in the city, big cities, but I, I try to go to my farms that I own and I have a farm in the middle of an Amish um, community that I lived with for two and a half years when I was younger and they actually manage the farm when I'm gone. So, and so many people are like, Ty, how do I buy a piece of land, raise my own chickens? So I built a course called AmishHomestead.com, the 11 laws of living off the land that I learned from living with the Amish. That's, it's kind of a long slogan, but that's kind of the headline. And it, it, I tried to think what's the minimum amount of things I need to teach people. And that's where I came up with the number 11. I tried like smaller, it's too short. So do you think is AmishHomestead.com, because so many people now associate the Amish with like, oh, they live off the land and community. Is that a subpar name, you think? No, that's a great name. Amish. No, because think about, so you talked earlier about, wait, I wrote down the, okay, 60,000. So an image is processed 60,000 times faster than words, right? So if you think about Amish homestead, it's really visually evocative. And one of the things I talk about in evaluating a name is imagery. And when you hear Amish homestead, I mean, you know, you talk about a picture says a thousand words. So what does your name say? How many pictures does your name say? Like Amish homestead, we all can picture something and we all picture something a little different, but it's exciting, right? Because the people that want a homestead, they're like, hey, Ty, how do I, how do I do this? How do I buy a piece of land? How do I raise chickens? How do I get somebody to manage my farm when I'm not there? That's like all of that is just wrapped up in a nice, neat little bow with Amish Homestead. It's super it's it's just really um, it arouses curiosity. No, it's 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 really good. Yeah. The, like I've done really well with numbers. That's why I'm like Amish Homestead doesn't have number. But I did one program in 2016, which just went crazy viral, which was, you know, social media marketing agency. But I shortened it SMMA and. I got so much attention. I, I'm assuming, I don't want to put words in your mouth, that that's not an optimal name. But now I actually own the trademark. So many people, the U.S. government, they usually don't give trademarks as quick as they did, but they established that I pretty much had cornered the market. And now it's an actual like adjective like or verb. You know, like verb is like Google it or Xerox it or snap it people actually say, oh, SMMA, and I own the trademark. So it's kind of something I can reinforce. Do you like defensible trademark names, even if they're not optimal? Like, what do you think of SMMA? Is that like a weird one? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, it doesn't resonate with me because I don't know what it stands for. Social media marketing agency. Oh, social media market. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then, yeah, no. And I get that. Okay. Now I see why people say it all the time. Yeah. SMMA. Yes. It was just an easier, but that one's not quite as good, but I made up for it by just having, it just kind of went viral. It got really good. Lots of people learned how to build a marketing agency. It's probably, I, I would go head to head with any course that actually took the percentage of people that went from rags to like making a hundred grand to a million dollars. So SMMA. So yeah. So, so on day one, you probably wouldn't have recommended that, but sometimes somebody listening, if their brand is kind of taken off. So I guess my second part question is, do you recommend or when do you recommend trademarking your name to protect it? You got to trademark. You have to trademark your name right away. Like, like as soon as you start using your name, put the little TM after it. You're allowed to do that. And you can't use the circle R, which is registered trademark until it's actually registered. But the trademark office is really backed up right now. I mean, I know you get special treatment there. They're like, oh, it's Ty Lopez. Move him to the front of the line. But most people have to wait months and months and months. So uh, I have a great trademark uh, firm that I work with that I highly recommend. They have lots of free business documents. It's called Indie Law, I-N-D-I-E Law. Um, but yep. I'll put that on the show notes for anybody listening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, they, and you can get a free uh, brand name protection consultation with them, super valuable. But I uh, think you have to trademark your name. You have to be able to protect your brand. It's super important. I mean, we, I mean, look at uh, who was it? Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. They were uh, trying to get art, archetype, archetype 
uh, trademarked and they, they got rejected because the company in Arizona is already using it. So even if you're, it doesn't matter who you are, like you, it matters who was using the name first. So don't, you know. What, what do you do? What So what does somebody do if they're listening and their name is kind of, so like, for example, clothing line, tropicalfox.com for like bikinis and sun, beachwear. Do you kind of like, I mean, it's kind of a decent. Love. I love it. I love it. I love the word fox. I love the word fox. But there's a brand name out of Australia called White Fox. I mean, it's, it's definitely a different name. So you think Tropical Fox is okay? Could there actually, a, a, a really smart marketing guy once ran something by me. I want to get your opinion. He said, try to tread on mental real estate that already exists. So don't copy. Don't copy. So maybe, you know, Shopify, Spotify. I don't know if you'd consider that, but, but you know, don't, you'll like this. This same mentor, he said, look, Ty, here's a principle of psychology and marketing. You can tell all your friends, I become a nudist. And your friends will think, oh, that's a little weird. But, you know, Ty's my friend. I'll let him be a nudist. Or you can announce, I become a Buddhist. And your friends will be like, oh, that's, that's a big change, but okay. But he said, you can't be a nudist Buddhist. It's too weird. And so I think sometimes names, when they don't tread on any mental real estate that already exists, it's nudist Buddhist versus maybe you're saying like tropical Fox, you know, and white Fox, it's definitely different enough. It's not like you're like mimicking. In fact, so, but maybe that term Fox already is somewhat associated or something. I, I mean, I don't know how to say it, but do you get what I'm saying? That maybe good names are in the same vicinity? Yeah. So... Yes, and tropical fox and white fox are definitely different enough because tropical and white sound nothing alike. But when you're doing, you know, like I talked about fresh books versus QuickBooks, it's it's oh it's too and the, they're both accounting software. Like you're like, no, that's too similar. So I would say be careful of that. But you can have a very distinctive name and not be a copycat at all. However, using like the existing, you know, what people are already are familiar with, that's definitely something to do. So for instance, the bike lock company, Kryptonite, we all know Kryptonite from Superman. And we know that Superman is repelled by Kryptonite. So we get the metaphor, oh, bike thieves are going to be repelled by Kryptonite lock. It's a great name. It's one of my favorite names. That's a good one. Kryptonite, Rick, do you like it for a bike lock company? You kind of get it. You're like, oh, it's Kryptonite. Any robber comes, they fall apart. Do you think, what do you, what do you think? Like a clothing line, I was talking to a friend, like Baroque for a, like a upscale clothing line. Sure. Yeah. Clothing, naming clothing is different than naming anything else. It, cause it, it can be called anything, right? Like, like, well, I was looking up, I'm working with, I'm naming, um, I'm naming some some socks right now. Really, really cool sock. Their performance, their performance enhancing. So their pat, they have a patent, um, performance enhancing socks. And, um, oh my gosh, I forgot where I was going with. Oh, athletic clothing, right? So clothing, most clothing has no benefit to it. These socks do. They enhance your performance. They give you an edge. So I can focus on that. But most clothing doesn't have an edge or, or doesn't have a benefit to it right it's it's just a lot of clothing is named after you know like versace right named after the designer yeah louis louis vuitton that was what i was gonna say i remember that has to be an example of a name that is dangerous if you're starting out because people when you see a louis vuitton how do you originally pronounce it as an Amer? rick is a True American. Luis Vuitton? That's how America, I know there's Americans out there saying Luis. One time I, when I first moved to North Carolina, I went to Taco Bell and my stepdad and I were standing in line. There was a guy in front of me and Taco Bell had just come to the South. <laughs> and the guy said, I want a quesadilla and two tacos. And my stepdad turned around. He's like, we're not in California anymore. But this Luis Vuitton or Vuitton, is that a dangerous name if you're starting out a high end brand? So even though it's kind of a generic word, underwear, you like the word lounge. Yeah. Yeah, but lounge, lounge. Yeah, I'm actually working on naming a hair salon right now. And I'm exploring the word lounge. I'm looking for words that start with L. And lounge is a great, yeah, lounge is like, 
Everybody wants to lounge. You probably don't, Ty, because you're so active, but but people like lounge sounds really good, like a lounge chair or lounging around. But one of your principles is don't restrict yourself. So calling it lounge underwear, isn't there, if they decide we want to branch out into bikinis and this, isn't there a little bit of an of a potential, you said be careful of restricting, or do you think it doesn't matter? I think lounge is going to work for anything. They're probably, you know. No, my mean, lounge underwear, because like the brand is loungeunderwear.com. Maybe they'd shorten it at some point to just lounge.com or something. Yeah, maybe they would shorten it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, the we worked on, or I was working on naming a men's men's athleisure brand. Hey, that word athleisure just makes me cringe. Leisure is so cringy, right? Like leisure suit. Yeah, it's not a good word. It's like my cousin; she cringe, cringes at the word moist. Yeah, moist. Yeah, moist is. She doesn't like when someone moist. Why does she cringe? Uh, anyway, go ahead. I know there's something about that word that makes people cringe. <laughs> so don't open any brand for women called Moist, Rick. Don't have Moist app. But ladies, you want to download Moist? I could, I could, I should build that app just to haunt and terrorize my cousin Maya. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted you. So, oh, with um, the men's athleisure brand. So my client was really into MMA fighting. So to come up with a name. I researched top, I looked up top movie fight scenes. I just Googled it. You know, now you could use chat GPT. Um, top movie fight scenes, top movie chase scenes. And I just read, you know, skimmed. I'm always looking for interesting words that pop out. And I saw stunt double and stunt double became the name. Isn't it good, right? Oh, that's a good one. That's nice. That's great. Stunt double, easy, not too many syllables. You're not going to mispronounce the word stunt. You know what I mean? And it's aspirational. So these guys laying around, lounging around in their athleisure wear, like they might be sitting on the couch eating, you know, flaming Cheetos, but they're imagining being a stunt double. You know, it's it's just one of those just a kind of cool, a cool name. Well, this has been fascinating and I highly recommend we didn't even have time. I'm going to bring you back on the show another time if you're open to it and uh there's so many principles go to tylopez.com slash eat my words and you will see all the show notes lots of links links to various things we talked about uh, links to her book audiobook i like to get them on spotify uh, i'm sorry i'm not not spotify uh to get on audible um speaking of names there uh audible seems like a decent name not a bad name that's a good name. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a solid. And Jeff Bezos, you're right. He is a good, he bought Audible and he's a good eye for, it's, it seems like people who make a lot of money are pretty damn good with names. You know, you got Bezos, you, you got, you know, even I think WhatsApp is slightly weird, but definitely has grown on the world with 1 billion daily active users or whatever it is. But anyway, so go to telepas.com slash eat my words. I really recommend the book. That's why I brought you on. I don't just bring people on, you know, for no reason. I And I think this is an under talked about subject that I'd like to help become more well known because there's nothing worse. It's kind of like when you name your baby, like people have a hard time naming baby because, you know, the woman says, oh, let's name our son, you know, Mike. And then the dude's like, Mike was a bully who bullied me growing up. Like if you get the name wrong, you're traumatized every time you say it. So absolutely, absolutely. And that's what I tell everybody to think about. Think when you're naming a brand, think about your own name and how many times you've had to spell it for people or help them pronounce it or remember it. And like, why would you want to give your brand name any disadvantages? Yeah, I, I think people overestimate the value of a logo. I'd rather have an average logo with an amazing name than an amazing logo with a dumb name because the logo, like Apple's the best in the business. Their logo on their website is this big. You know, it's not even that that important. So anyway, go take the quiz on her website, tylopez.com slash eat my words. Alexandra, I appreciate your time and I want to do this again. We'll do a part two. I'm going to get a lot of feedback and I'm going to collect the notes and all the things I forgot to ask you, my followers will definitely remind me. Thank you. And I just want to tell everyone in the show notes, the name evaluation test, it's called the smile and scratch test. 
And it's based on my smile and scratch. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's based on my philosophy that a name should make you smile instead of scratch your head. So put your name in there. It will ask you 12 different questions about it and give you your results. Yeah. I took the quiz. It's, it's great. So I'll have all those links. I appreciate it. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Ty. Bye.